What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Turn the Jets podcast. I'm your host, Will Parkinson, at WillPod11 on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, all 32 TOJ Talks, Paul Kilgallen, Badlands Podcast Network, the other guys. Emergency podcast. Uh, we've we've kind of let it marinate about two or three hours, uh, about 20 or 12 hours-ish from, from the Jets-Broncos. I mean, the Jets, wow. It felt like Jets-Broncos last night. Jets-Bills, uh, working on like three hours of sleep here. Jets acquired Devontae Adams. I want to start with that. And then kind of get into a little bit of Hassan Reddick, and we're going to touch on, you know, the game last night a little bit. Paul, how are we doing? You have uh, been a man on a mission the last uh, last 12 hours or so. Yeah, fourth fourth pod in 24 hours here. Um, I, I actually drank like 400 cups of coffee this morning to try to shake off that horrible game last night and getting home at, you know, two o'clock in the morning and all that. And uh, it's not working now. I'm just jittery and and uh, and, a, and another day full of news here. So I'm hanging in there. Uh, it's all right. Luckily, the Mets aren't playing tonight. So at least I don't have that stress on me. But uh, but it's all good. Yeah. So let's let's start with the the most kind of pressing news, right? The Jets. I guess we could start quickly with, you know, what happened last night. You've talked a little bit about it, obviously. Um, really disappointing loss, you know, in my opinion, last night, not because the Jets lost. It was because I felt like there was a lot of signs of progress. I felt like there was some things we were really hoping to see. I thought Rodgers looked the second best he's looked all year. I thought Brees Hall played probably his best overall game, although we'll get to the one, you know, huge miss or two huge misses of the game. Garrett Wilson looks like he's back intact. You got a good Lazard game. Um, the offensive line as a whole was was pretty decent, I thought. They weren't great, obviously. Tyron Smith had a really rough night. Um, the defense gave up three points in the second half. All that said, they're leaving MetLife two and four. Um, had a chance to be in first place. Now they're going to do – they got a lot of digging to do over the next two to three weeks. What you kind of just – now you've sat on it for 12 hours or so, where are you kind of at with, with the loss last night? Yeah, it's. I think Rogers put it best in his post game where he, you know, he felt like this one was a missed opportunity. This wasn't one where they started slow and they had to claw their way back and they fell just short. Like it's a, it's a different way than they've lost this year, where you know the team actually generally played pretty well and probably well enough to win. Um, you know, there was one bad defensive drive at the beginning, obviously some special teams issues with Zerline, um, but like the offense was moving the ball. It's one for four in the red zone. It's missing kicks. And it's getting run over on one drive. And so uh, it's it's really frustrating from a fan's perspective that, you know, at the end of the day, we're still getting the same result here. But it's not even like we can put our finger on what's exactly wrong because it's not the slow start this time. It's not all the same things that have been plaguing them the last three weeks. This is a new inventive and creative way to lose that the Jets have now created, uh, which seems to happen every year. And so um, I think, you, you know, it, it's potentially even more frustrating than the Broncos and Vikings losses because this one was an opportunity. Like you could you could almost swallow those last two because we still had a chance to take first place in the AFC East and get a good position on the Bills in this one. And you had it and it was right in front of you and you blew it, right? And so um, off Awful game to watch, too many flags, terrible product last night. Um, but at the end of the day, like, they're not dead. They're still making moves. So, you know, we'll press on here. Look, I, I felt like, you know, the Jets right now, obviously, look, they'd be 5-1, and one, sure. Uh, they're not. But the reason you go out and get Devontae, and, and obviously we, it's been reported this trade was, um, you know, I, I think I texted the group. Our group chat last night said, like, He's quite literally on his way here. Uh, you know, he, was, he obviously showed up and, you know, with Rodgers, uh, you know, on McAfee, you know, you know, about an hour ago. And this team is super frustrating. I think this team is not as disciplined as they need to be. I think they're not as good in some spots as we thought. All that said, they're still extremely talented. And you see these flashes where, I don't know, there was a lot of offensive drives last night where, like, it's like, oh. Like Roger said it himself, they should have put up 30 plus points in this game. Um, if your kicker can make basic kicks, you're at a minimum four and two. Um, if Michael Clemens was not so caught up in talking trash to Deion Dawkins, it would, you know, the Jets are getting the ball back there with a minute and 40 seconds left. And I have no doubt they could go and score and touchdown. Like, I, I, I just don't get the killing of Rogers this morning is weird. Um, Mike Williams clearly ran the wrong route. I mean, he's now in every trade rumor imaginable, and Rodgers kind of killed him respectfully after the game. So um, he's looked not great the last couple of weeks. I don't, there, there was just some stuff last night where, like, you either leave going two and four, another found another way to lose, this sucks, 
more you're like they kind of were they were they were gonna win one of these next two Buffalo or Pittsburgh. Now it's like they're just the biggest issue I think right now, Paul. Before we get to Devonte, is like there's a lot of things that are either going right or getting better, right? Like Brees Hall is starting to look a lot more like himself. Although I'd love him to make anybody miss because the play down the sidelines, the difference in the football game uh, at the end of the day, and you trust your running back as a top 35 pick, one of the best running backs in the league to make a safety miss in the open field like that. And he couldn't do it. Uh, another bills game where Brees makes a big run and, and doesn't make the last guy miss. And Garrett Wilson starting to look good again. You know, the, the defense overall, I feel like is playing really sound as a unit. It's just, they're banged up at certain spots and light at other spots. So um, they're going to probably have to make a move at defensive line, whether it's Reddick or it's, you know, bringing out somebody else. The Jets go get Devonte this morning, you know, officially the trade's obviously now official price tag thoughts on the move overall. How much better does this make them where you stand on, uh, on Devonte Adams being a jet? Yeah, I'm good with it. I mean, it's, it's a little, I said it on with Joe this morning too. It's a little anticlimactic because We've been talking about this for a year now at this point, and it's part of like, you know, everything last year where we talked about Rodgers for a year without seeing him play. It's kind of the same deal. And so now we kind of fully get to see the thing that we've been talking about for a year and a half. Um, I'm frustrated by Michael, by Mike Williams's usage and um, and the, the trade rumors that are now coming out. Like, I get it. I understand. But this is something that the Jets have done historically across coaching staffs across player groups, across, you know, uh, general managers where they acquire a player and then they just don't deploy him in the way that he's traditionally been deployed and what he's good at, right? Like we haven't seen a corner fade route in the end zone to Mike Williams in the red zone once, not once, right? And like, that's what he's good at. And so while I appreciate that he was coming off an ACL and probably needed some ramp up time, it's frustrating that his usage has just looked weird and off. Um, that said, Right. Like if we if you if you jettison him now, like the team has other needs, whether it be, you know, something beefing up on the DL or getting in, you know, another swing offensive lineman or safety or like whatever you could do to bolster the team at this point, you probably feel pretty comfortable with Garrett Wilson, um, Devontae Adams, Al Lazard, and then like hopefully at some point Malachi Corley and Xavier Gibson is the five and whatever, right? So that's fine. Um, as far as the trade itself goes, like the compensation is kind of in line with what I thought it would be. Um, I thought it would end up like it's it's obvious that the Raiders were sticking on it too, and that's what took so long. And what we got to eventually was a a team performance conditional three that moves to a two if both a individual performance goal and a team performance goal are met, which I'm kind of okay with, I think. Like, Also, the Jets don't historically pick well in the second round anyway. So if we have to give up a second round pick for Devontae Adams, it's because we went to the AFC Championship game or Super Bowl. And I think we're all okay with that if that happens at that point. And if it's not, right, then we only gave up a three for him and you can cup eight with him next year because the, the money's not fully guaranteed. So like, I'm happy to have him in the building and you know, I'm, I'm excited to see. Yeah, no, 1,000%. I think like Devonte is still an excellent football player. He still can, um, yeah, he still can. He still can do all the things you need from him. I think he'll move into a little bit of that Garrett Wilson role at the moment, uh, and then the kind of like Garrett be able to be a little bit more free and you know in you know some different roles in, in this offense. You saw seventy three percent or seventy two percent motion last night from the Jets. I thought Todd Downing had a great night, and you know, overall. And I think that's a, a great sign moving forward. And Devontae is going to play on Sunday, which is a great sign moving forward. I think that's a big boost. You saw just some of the player reaction of like coaching stuff is, is one thing. A lot of the times I think it's the, it's the acquisition of a player saying like, Hey, you're two and four and like, you got to get it right. But like, we're giving you one more piece here to help you. And um, you know, we'll get to Reddick in a minute. We'll, we'll see what kind of occurs there. And yeah, I just more Devonte is not a bad thing. Like this is a guy who, 12 months ago when he had like some competency of quarterback play and wasn't extremely injured, like with the shoulder was a 1,315 touchdown guy. Like it's not as if he's washed. His game's going to age gracefully. I think he'll, I would assume the jets are going to rework that deal into a one or two year extension on top of what he has. He's obviously not going to get two for 72, you know, fully guaranteed like that, you know, that money's totally, un, you know, not guaranteed. So um, it's a scheme fit. It's a relationship fit. He's going to play right away. Uh, it makes Garrett Wilson better. It makes Brees Hall better. It makes Tyler Conklin better. It makes Alan Lazard better. Like, it makes everybody better. And yes, it does fix a lot of the issues for the Jets offense, in my opinion. A lot of their issues are like, they don't get open. 
like point blank, they don't get open. Guess who gets open better than pretty much anybody in the league? Devontae yep. Adams. So, and when the protection breaks down, Aaron Rodgers is going to know exactly where seventeen is. Yeah, and like Garrett, him and Garrett are starting to get into that, but like Devontae's already there, and it just. It's a special group. You had to defend them in different ways. So I love the deal. Uh, again, it's not anything that we didn't know was going to happen. It's just, it's nice to have it happen. Hassan Reddick's the next thing, right? He comes out, uh, he hires your Rosenhaus uh, on Sunday or Monday morning. It's like, wow, he's going to, he'll be here and report. Uh, it felt like, wow, he's going to meet with the Jets Monday night. Then it's, well, the Jets allowed him to seek a trade. Then it's Drew Rosenhaus going on the Acho show. Uh, about an hour ago saying he wants to be a jet for many years. He's hoping to get this worked out and, and all these different things. What do you make of this? Cause they need him, But also at the same time, if you told me he got traded, like I wouldn't be shocked. How funny is it that all the same shit is just happening over again in a condensed timeline? Like it's all the same stuff with Reddick of like, Oh, he's reporting. He's not reporting. He wants to trade. He wants to be here long-term. It's we've all, we've heard all of this already. It's just not now all happening again over a two-day period. So I think what it strikes me as is, is Rosenhaus is just getting up to speed. He came in, right, and he said, okay, let's let's go back to the beginning. When you first got traded here, let's start over. Let's try to wipe the slate clean. And he's coming across all the same roadblocks that the previous, you know, the CAA came across, right? And so hopefully Rosenhaus will be maniacal enough and and – as a few people have said, like he wouldn't take this client on if he didn't think that he was going to get a payday involved in some way. Right. So hopefully he's going to get to the conclusion faster and then actually spur action, whether that is a trade or whether that is him reporting and signing a deal here, whatever it is, like hopefully we can at least get to a resolution faster with him. Look, I, I'm not going to hold anything personal against Hassan Reddick. I think a lot of the fan base is like angry at Hassan Reddick and, and I get it right. Like you, you we need him, right? We need him. The pass rush is suffering. Jermaine Johnson went out for the year. Bryce Huff isn't here. JFM isn't here. There's a hole that needs to be fixed. And we're all suffering through Michael Clemens. And we need him here. And so I understand taking it personally and getting mad about it. But if the dude shows up and starts playing and starts racking up sacks, I could care less that he missed the first five weeks. As yeah. long as we can get him here and get hot, it's all good by me. Yeah, no, it makes, uh, makes a ton of sense. I think, look, I think the Jets... I'd love that the Jets are able to make it work with Reddick for the rest of the year. I think it would benefit both parties. Um, it'd be add to this defense. This defense needs to add a defensive lineman, whether it's, you know, Quentin Jefferson really getting cut and being an interior guy there, uh, whether it's uh, adding Reddick, whether it's a Jed Devion Clowney, whatever it may be, you know, go uh, go trade three ones for Miles Garrett. No, I mean, look, at the end of the day, like, they do need another defensive lineman. They have an all pro in house. You'd love to get that worked out. I mean, it seems like maybe it was Detroit, maybe an option because of Hutchinson. They want to trade him. I don't know how that would work. Um, so you know, we'll see there. Last couple of things here. Um, Mari Cooper traded to the bills again for a third round pick, a three and a seven, I believe for a Cooper and a six um, makes the bills better. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure Cooper in super cold weather out in Buffalo. I'm not sure how that's going to work. He's a really talented player. Obviously, we know he's very good. I think Buffalo and the Jets both got better this morning. Paul, where are you at in terms of like, as we kind of wrap here and we'll have a much, you'll have a longer form, you'll have longer form stuff the rest of the week. I have a bunch of longer form stuff. There's a million pods on the feed. Um, where are you at kind of going into Sunday now? Like what have, have you kind of gone into like, Oh yeah, like I'm gonna be Sunday. I'm locked in, and if they win Sunday, I'm so back because they have New England the next week and Houston coming here in a short week without Nico Collins, and then a crappy Arizona team. They got a crappy NDT. Like, is it? Do you feel like yourself is like if they win this weekend, you're just like, okay, maybe we can kind of get hot here and be six and five at the bye, and all of a sudden we can go on a roll here? Or are you like, I have, I am full on. You better prove this shit to me because. Aaron Rodgers is washed and Devontae's old and you know, like where how where do you kind of land in this uh this whole kind of dramatized WWE like script of the Jets right now? I'm not there yet. I'm I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I'm definitely not at they're so back. I'm also not at it's over blown up. Devontae's agreed to a restructured contract at less than the cap hit, and they will likely adjust his twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six numbers as well. So okay. sorry, continue. 
so that's good. So then they're doing some cash tricks here. That means potentially something else is coming down the line. That's good. Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm, I'm definitely not at their back yet. I'm definitely not at it's over, blow it up. Um, I'm disappointed. I'm just disappointed that it seems like we're always fighting out of a hole and we're always kind of behind the eight ball and needing to play catch up. And uh, as far as the Steelers game is concerned next week, I'm like, I'm actually glad at the prospect of potentially Russell Wilson playing because I think we own him. Um, however, the thing that I can't get off in my mind is like, how, who's blocking TJ Watt? Like, how, how are we stopping TJ Watt from killing Aaron Rodgers next week? Uh, because Tyron Smith did not inspire confidence last night. And as far as accountability goes with this team, I am good with Aaron Rodgers saying what he said about Mike Williams. If the dude was in the wrong spot, ac accountability in press conferences is a good start. I need more. I need the kicker to be held accountable. I need the left tackle to be held accountable. I understand he's a Hall of Fame player. If he needs to take a phantom trip to the IR for a little while to get his head right or to get his body right, maybe that's in the cards. Like there needs to be more accountability than just calling people out in press conferences because at the end of the day, that's just like kind of like talking shit, right? That's not real accountability. That's just airing people out in the media. So I'd like to see more accountability. I'd like to understand what the plan is for stopping TJ Watt next week. And as far as the Buffalo thing goes, like Buffalo still doesn't scare me. I'm on record many times over saying that Josh Allen doesn't scare me because I think he shrinks in big moments. And I kind of feel the same way about Amari Cooper. There's a reason this dude's been on four or five teams at this point. Like he's a little bit of a dog. Is he a talented wide receiver? Yeah, he is. But like he's he doesn't scare me. Him getting added into the fold in Buffalo does not scare me. So I still think the division is gettable. I still think everything's okay. But we're, it's getting, you know, it's getting late early here. Like they need to start winning games and no more excuses. They need to figure this stuff out. And so uh, that's a very long answer to a short question, which is where are you at and where I'm at is I'm in the middle. I'm waiting to see how we, what happens here. Um, more moves need to be made. We need to shore up some other pieces and uh, for Christ's sake, can we win a game, please? Yeah. Yeah, look, I think they're going to have to win one or two they're not supposed to. Uh, now that's just the reality of it throughout the rest of the season, whether that's, hey, we thought maybe they'd slip up in Arizona. Well, you can't slip up in Arizona now. Or, hey, we thought maybe the Texans game was a loss. Now you got to maybe take care of that game. Or, um, hey, you know, going to, down to Miami, everyone had penciled in as a loss. Now can you go down to Miami and win? Or, I don't know, go up to Buffalo and win. Who knows? I mean, I, maybe atone for your sins of the last decade, right? Like, at some point, the Jets got better the last four days like a lot better they have a chance to get even more you know even more better with you know the horrible english there but like the reality is they have a chance to continue to improve woody seems to be all in uh based on you know his comments this morning well they were interesting but it, it is what it is i think I, i'm just at the point where like they win the steelers game we're right back to where we just were right which is hey go take care of business new england against the worst team in the nfl and you just got the dog off your back. Go get it, win a third in a row against New England. You're coming home to a Houston team that's banged up on the road on a short week. You played them really well last year. Like, can you do it again? That's for me. I just, I thought Rodgers, the way he looked last night was encouraging. He made some special, special throws. I thought the play calling was encouraging. I thought Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson playing better was encouraging. Getting back Moses and Mosley and guys like that was, was encouraging. But they got to win games. They got to, like, the NFL is a lot more about, not losing it than winning it. And the Jets have kind of proven that over the last three days or three weeks. So um, two and four, it's a shame, but the Jets got fucking Devonte Adams and Garrett Wilson lined up on either side of the formation uh, for the next couple of years with Brees Hall in the backfield. That's pretty damn cool with Aaron Rodgers playing quarterback. Now go win some football games. That's it is what it is. Um, Rodgers looks the happiest he's looked in on, you know, all year. Devonte looks happy. I think, you know, Garrett Wilson, all the tweets, Braylon Allen said he feels like he's in a Madden franchise. At the end of the day, this is what it comes down to, man. Like, you got all the pieces now. Go figure it out. Go win in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh again. And then go beat New England on the road. And let's have a conversation in about 14, 15, 16 days here. Hey, the 4-4 four and four Jets are back to 500. They're playing really good football. How can they go beat this Houston Texans team before they go to play Arizona and, and Indy? That's a much different conversation than, you know, I, I, just, I don't think the whole it's season over draft time. Yeah, we might get to that point, but I still really don't feel like this. That's where we're headed. Paul, I appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, you know, it's been an exhausting 24 hours for you. Um, appreciate everybody for listening. We'll be back. Joe and Connor will be back on the feed later tonight. Uh, I'll be back on the feed tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. 
Appreciate you for listening. We'll talk to you guys soon.